Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Oh, such a good one today. Uh, <laughs> not that they're not always good, but welcome to the College Investor Audio Show. Today, we're taking a look at this. How much should you have in a 529 plan and by what age? The 529 college savings plan is really one of the best ways to save for college, but most people aren't taking full advantage of them. I'm not going to lie. Listen, I'm one of them. Uh, <laughs> but the idea of a 529 college savings plan is, is awesome. You can contribute money into an account and it will grow tax-free to someday pay for your child's education. And you can contribute a lot of money to actually up to 300 grand <laughs> in most states. And that's not where the trouble arises. The real trouble comes from rising tuition costs and how much every college savings calculator says you need to save for your child's education. According to the child board, or I should say the college board, the average cost of a public four-year college, this is public, in 2018 and 19 was $10,230 for in-state in -state tuition. <laughs> the average cost for a private school, $34,920. Ugh. When you start plugging those numbers into the college savings calculator, suddenly you're supposed to start saving over 500 bucks per month for your child. That's just for one. When you have multiple children? Okay. That add in to your own savings for retirement, and you're not going to have anything left for yourself each month, let alone buying groceries. I mean, come on. So let's dive in and see how much you should have in a 529 plan. So as a parent, you should also have pretty solid term life insurance, by the way. This is just a quick aside. This is to protect your family. So beyond saving for college, this is a must for taking care of your kids. You can really just get a quote in minutes from our friends at Bestow. Um, and you can find a link at thecollegeinvestor.com. Just thought I'd mention that before we dig in. Okay, now... Let's follow the order of operations for saving for college. That single amount gives me sticker shock each month when I think about saving for my child's college education. But it's also an important reminder of why everyone should follow the order of operations for saving for your kid's college. It's an easy one. The key phrase is yes. Y-E-S. Now the Y stands for you. You have to make sure your own financial house is in order before you try to save for your child's college. If you can't make rent or buy groceries, there are bigger issues to fix first. However, the you bucket also includes saving for your own in retirement and making sure you have an emergency fund. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. You can't get a loan for retirement. Make sure you save for yourself first. The E in YES stands for Education Savings Accounts. If you've saved for yourself, next you can save for your kid in Education Savings Accounts, like the 529 plan. The S, of course, Savings. After contributing some amount to the 529 plan or other Education Savings Accounts, it's smart to save in a traditional savings account as well. And that's just in case there are other expenses you'd like to help your kid with you know, that don't qualify as, edu as education expenses, like a car. How much you really need to save in a 529 plan? Let's take a look at that for a second. So, you know, part two of that scary number is that you need to save each month for your child's college. That number is based on saving 100% of their college costs, by the way. That's how they arrive at those scary $500, $600 a month. As a parent, you don't need to pay for 100% of their school. Or, you know, maybe you'll pay for 100% for their public and state tuition, and then the rest is up to them. Or maybe you'll just have a target savings number, and the rest is up to them. It's simply important to remember that you don't have to save and pay for all their college. It's their college, not yours. Plus, there are tons of other ways to help them pay for school, from finding scholarships to getting student loans. So instead of stressing out about saving $500 a month for every child in your family, I'm going to make the following assumptions and save based on that. 
So here are some assumptions. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and make these. I'm going to save for an in-state college that currently costs $10,200 per year. I will contribute to all four years of college. I will pay 50% of the projected college costs. I'm done contributing to the 529 plan when my child is 18. Sorry, but you're out of the house now. <laughs> and I expect college costs to continue to increase by 4% per year. I expect to get 6% per year return, at least, on my investments in my 529 plan. With these assumptions, you should be saving about $96 a month for your child's college, or $1,151 a year. Not shabby. That's not too bad at all. We break this down in complete detail. We have this awesome chart you can see at thecollegeinvestor.com. All you have to do is just type in the search bar how much you should have in a 529 plan. And then you'll be able to see this chart. It breaks down what you should have in there from the low end to the high end and everything else in between. Um, Fidelity also has this really cool free calculator. I just did it a few minutes ago. It works awesome. It allows you to determine how much you're, you're going to need specifically for your situation. They leverage many of the same assumptions that we just did. And they also agree that you don't need to save 100% of your kid's college edu education expenses. You can check out the link to their free savings calculator also on that article at thecollegeinvestor.com. So according to the breakdown of the chart, I know I didn't really go through all of it because it would be too confusing, but from the results, we did conclude that the goal for most people saving for college by the time your kid is 18 should be between $37,328 or $245,427. That's on the high end. That's a huge range, no doubt. But remember, what low end and high end mean. So the low end amount is for someone that wants to help their child pay for a public four-year school. The high end is for someone that wants to fully pay for a four-year private education for their kid. Parents should also remember this. Even when saving for private school, many students who attend private schools get discounted tuition or receive scholarships to offset the real tuition price. So even that high end number might not make sense when saving for college. In this scenario, the low-end 529 plan will be able to pay out between $9,600 and $10,000 per year. That's not bad for each of the four years of school. That's awesome. Now, given that the college costs will rise, that should be about 50% of a four-year public school tuition in about 18 years. Okay, so here's where to open a 529 plan. What many people don't realize is that you can invest in almost any, any state 529 plan. For some people, it can make sense to use your own state's plan to take advantage of the tax deduction, but not all states offer tax deductions on contributions. I'm looking at you, California. If the state doesn't matter, the next things to look at are performance and ease of saving. So for performance, you want good performance for low fees. For ease of savings... You look at whether the plan can be connected to savings programs like College Backer. Savingforcollege.com ranks the best plans every year. Of course, there would be a list. Uh, <laughs> what plan you choose depends on what on the state that you're in. We also have a map at thecollegeinvestor.com where you can click on your own state and see what's going on there too. Now, here's some recommendations to help save for college. Even saving just $100 a month can seem like a pretty daunting task. We understand. I know it is for me. However, when it comes to saving for college, here are some simple tricks that can help. Number one, save all of your child's birthday and holiday money. No kidding. In many families, kids get money from their grandparents, aunts, uncles, and more. I'd estimate that the average kid might receive at least 200 bucks a year in gift money. If you save that, you're 20% of the way to fulfilling their annual 529 contribution. Boom. A great way to do this is to use a service like College Backer, like I mentioned earlier. Number two, look at You Promise by Sally May. It's a free service. It's designed to help families pay for college by simply doing their normal shopping. You Promise offers cash back rewards for linking a credit card or debit card and then using that card at participating retailers. 
you can earn anywhere from 1% to 25% back at different retailers. YouPromise says that some members are earning at least $1,000 a year. That's almost everything you need to fully fund a 529 plan. You promise is easy to sign up for. Check it out. We have a link, thecollegeinvestor.com. So here's the last tip that we're going to give you. Focus on earning more money. Instead of looking at where to cut in your budget, just ask yourself, how, how can I add 100 bucks in income to my budget? I'm a firm believer that anyone can earn an additional $100 a month. And what a better way to put that extra 100 bucks to use than by funding a 529 plan for your child. If you don't know where to start, check out our list of over 50 ways to earn extra money on the side. Over 50 of them. All of it. All of the links. Everything you need to know. Thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks again so much for listening today. We'll talk to you again very soon.